Landing heart-stopping tail whips, losing your own win with ignorance, setting record wins and escaping rattling high side scares. Yeah, we have it all for you here today. You're going to want to see these one in a trillion motorcycle racing moments when riders faced embarrassing moments and unprecedented situations, while others seemingly had the time of their lives with amazing victories to deal with. Facing an awkward situation, necessarily termed as pretty much a close shave and balancing mid-air after a bunny hop on a two-wheel contraption going 140 miles an hour, that can only be described in two ways, sheer luck or real-life professionalism. But who better to ask than South African rider Darren Binder himself when he pulls off a crazy Superman move, which saves his skin and seemingly turns him into the man of the show. I wonder what move Superman would use in such a situation? probably fly off with it, maybe. Yet this next moment might presumably be considered one of the most ridiculous. A premature bump on the side, leading to a loss of balance and a hitchhike to avoid a race crash. Yeah, Marion Calvo did what a real good guy does. But what's more fascinating is how quickly the save turned sour. With Jorge Martinez blaming his competitor for his unforeseen predicament, he lashes a quick punch at oblivious Calvo, who progressively replicates his oppressor's antics. Even though the bump was unprepared for, both racers would have handled that situation a little better, unfortunately, race officials wouldn't have it, and both racers are suspended with a two-year-long ban from the track. Ouch! But if French writer Loris Baz teaches us anything, it is that there is no limit on how low you roll. Well, at least that's the idea. Loris Baz heroically turned into Batman while navigating low at the apex of a turn, pulled his shoulder, and miraculously managed to get back onto his bike. Even though in all Justice League animated episodes I've watched of Batman never taking a fall off, Baz seemingly did a pretty good job saving that Ducati and ended up making the team sigh from what would have been a pretty hefty repair cost. That's like, nice down. Oh, oh, nice down. Nice down. Initially the team were disappointed and then they said, hi. It was his right, it was his left boot, his left knee, left elbow, left shoulder. Funny thing though, the way motorcycle racing goes, nothing can compare to what this moment showed me. Wowing the crowd with an unconventional knee surf to the finish line, Finnish rider Nicholas Ajo didn't just have the crowd going wild, he proved his love and raw talent for the game. When you crash like, almost crash like this, you know, the, the wall is really, really close there, and otherwise if I, wouldn't, if I wouldn't try to save it, I would hit the wall and for sure break something, so I just, I just wanted to, to save myself, and, and in the end, yeah, it was just a few meters from the finish line, so I just... That's a pretty dope move, which kind of reminds me of the next episode of Thug Life by Dr. Dre. And it also has to be one of the most awesome finishes in the racing world. Or is it? An almost savage crash and a first place to last place disposition. That's gotta hurt a man's feelings. But why not find a way to redeem yourself and save your skin and style from a crash and risk not falling in front of your fans? That was what Nicholas Ajo decided to follow through in Barcelona when a tail whip caused a sitting disposition and incredibly to his advantage, nobody even remembered that he was leading the race a few moments ago. They were all talking about the next innovation to sitting positions for motorcycle rides. Talk about a surprising moment. But what is even more surprising is what happened at the Misano racetrack in Italy, which might probably pack a rattling for the few speed demons watching. It is said, the real understanding of competition is that if you feel you cannot win, cheat. Romano Fanati certainly couldn't be left behind after an overtake by Stefano Misano and ended up performing a textbook grab the front brakes and see who remains behind the cheat. Amidst the battle for positions, race officials flag back Romano for life endangerment, and profoundly an early retirement follows. Anyways, aside from the Misano shenanigans, imagine having to deal with one of these moments. Let's look at the 16. Oh, oh under brakes. Just on the brakes, look at... Look how close it is to Hayden Schultz. It almost took him out. I mean, look look oh. at how much speed he has and undercut him there. That is so close. And there's your save of the day. 
It's easy enough to endure a fall of that category, but to be able to be graced with this level of luck that allows you to pull off a near-miss collision with the machine dissipating 300 foot-pound seconds of raw horsepower, that's just incredible. Seems like Hayden Schultz's fairy godparent had been working overtime. Meanwhile, at the 2018 Grand Prix in Le Mans, France, what looked to be a major disaster waiting to unfold soon turned into one of the most iconic saves in motorcycle racing history. Czech rider Jakub Kornfeil showed off his incredible motocross takeoff skills with his Prustel KTM bike by using another bike as his tool of salvation, which he jumped over and escaped from a rather obvious crash. Back to go as we come on to the start and finish straight for what is... Oh, Bastianini! Oh, motocross oh style! Goodness. Have you ever seen anything like that? Cornfile goes motocrossing here at Le Mans. But the real question is, how did he do it? Well, it's just as he confessed. Open the gas, stay on the bike, and try and survive in the air. But sadly for Bastianini, his chances of victory slowly came crashing down within the last few moments. That's gotta be the worst way to suffer a crash. Needless to say, some of the most memorable moments in motorcycle racing come from the most unprecedented moments. Like this situation when countryman rider Vince Fries took a violent face full of rubber and mud after having a wild ride and a nasty crash on the dirt track. He's lucky he had his helmet on. Pretty, pretty sore body tomorrow because that's, I mean, I cannot believe he wasn't out straight cold. That is, that is scary to watch. But one thing that he teaches us is that whatever the world throws at you, always find a way to stand back up and never give up. A crash is one thing, but having a heated argument while racing at 80 miles per hour in the middle of the track, that's an insane way to lose a contract. Italian rider Romano Fenati, speeding down the racetrack, gets into a rather messy situation with Nicholas Aisho causing tempers to rain high. The situation soon turns into a safety hazard, and Romano is flagged off. I guess Romano missed his classes on anger management. Aside from fights and wild rides, Let's transition to another iconic Marc Marquez moment. When you're the king of the track, nothing can take that away from you, not even a little engine trouble. Trailing at 24th position, it's incredible how you're able to collect positions and land on 6th in just two short laps. In the 2022 Coda races, Marquez unleashed his expert mobility in the race, serving clean cuts through other riders after having suffered engine trouble at the start of the race. But apart from his incredible switch in positions, his warm-up crash and preparations for a race is by far one of his most deadly. In a split moment of unfathomable ordeals, Marquez found himself dancing to the tune of a savage crash when the rear wheel slid from under him, causing some nasty business that sent him skywards and back down. This is super, super fast. What's happened to Marquez here? He tips it in. Whoa! Wow! Oh, dearie me! Unbelievable! The rear tire just letting go in the most spectacular fashion! That is up. Even though the moment served as a stark reminder that your gear saves your rear, it is amazing how after being viciously hurled around, the man was able to walk away completely unscathed. Even Santi Hernandez couldn't believe it happened. But what is even harder to believe is this insane wipeout in 2021 that took out four riders including Toby Consul and Hayden Schultz when apparently, Engine coolant from Consul's bike spilled on the track, causing the pileup. He slowed down there too. Oh no! It takes out, takes out. He was out of the podium picture, oh. and bikes are coming all over the place. That's Tony Consul. Luckily, Consul and Schultz, as well as the rest, emerged with no serious injuries. Or when this whiplashing moment turned savage after a slip-up off track which caused Max Todd to take a dramatic switch in directions and look back at other racers before hitting the tarmac and having his legs run over by Cody Wyman's bike. 
there of the number 58. Oh, man, he crashes right in front of everybody. Does Max Toth. He got oh. off out into the dirt. I do not know. I think Cody Wyman may have touched him. I have no idea. Thankfully, both Todd and Wyman emerged with no serious injuries, only a memory they most likely won't forget. Let alone an unfortunate crash that caused a bike to burst into flames, which after a couple of attempts failed to obey the laws of physics. I mean, how does that even happen? What I do know is that in the high-octane world, things can change any second, and the results might blow you away. But perhaps we can all agree that the bike was on demon time. Or maybe it was what British writer Peter Kickman was doing. Going on to set the fastest lap ever recorded of 136.358 miles per hour on the deadliest racetrack known to man, Kickman wasn't just racing, he was on demon time. I even wonder what he was thinking at the time. So much so, he ended up becoming an iconic racer to ever grace the aisle, and pretty much the top show of the race. So, pretty, pretty epic to turn up and win all, all three races straight off the bat. There's not many teams that can say they've done that. Um... But apparently, he is not the only one with great skills to show. British rider Gary Carswell's intense moment at the 2002 TT senior race when he unintentionally popped a 190 miles an hour wheelie and seemingly held it strong, I know I would pretty much rush to switch to a new pair of draws. And we've still got McGillis in third. Oh, that was a bit nifty. Oh, and he says yes. Which reminds me, I received a note from Italian sensation. Inea Bastianini reminding me to talk about his five-point worth sly move against Pecco Bagnaia while at the Aragon Grand Prix. Sneak attack as well. Here, here he goes into seven. Into seven, he just squeezes Bagnaia out towards the paint. Now then, Pecco Bagnaia, how much risk will he take for those extra five world championship points? Following his debut in 2014, Bastianini, nicknamed The Beast, worked up the ranks from his rookie years to become one of the best in the track. And once he did, he was going to be sorry for anything. I'm not sure about you, but up front, this next moment is one that can be described in two words. Slip slain. With the pinnacle of wisdom being power and observation, Enea Bastianini has grown to become a personal favorite. Having an understanding of the game and using it to collect swift positions at the finish. Now that's power. Points are when will Anaya Bastianini and pick his moment? Here comes the move on the inside, using the slipstream. Anaya Bastianini then leads. He hits the front at turn 12 for the first time. Giannini, all hail the new King of Kota in 2022. The type of power that can subjectively put the rock in Lincoln Park. No pun intended. Anyways, this next moment is rather amusing to watch when you decided to show your amazing skills at imitating racers' dance moves. Yeah, Indonesian fans start to show us some of the moves, whether that's a dance move or whether he's simulating twisting the throttle of a motorcycle. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, but either way. Or this even more amusing moment with the Ducati team cheerleading bass boys, who in light of the incredible cheering skills and overall stylish fits, fairly deserve a good nickname. How about the red wigs? Does that count? Ever wondered what embarrassing moments feel like? Just ask Martin. When you can handle your excitement and topple over a fellow rival rider's bike with your own and can get it back up by yourself, I personally wouldn't take off that helmet. But even more embarrassing is when you are racing down the track and your motorcycle soon breaks in half. The FMF Race 2. Jamie Law's bike roughed up the man's ego when it tore into two chunks of steel and rubber before landing on the edge of the track. Oh, I tell you what, that is a stretch monster gone wrong. Look at that. It's not every day you encounter such an ordeal. This next moment kind of reminds me of that one guy in high school who couldn't just keep off from the world of pain. 
I'm not sure what complications he has managed to withstand in the past, but this moment was epic. Apparently, his crash evoked a dangerous shoulder injury that medical attendants soon cattered to, but intriguingly, after receiving aid, Chancherulo hops back onto his motorcycle and continues as if nothing has happened. Leader. Oh, man. Back I think in. I just saw it go back in. You gotta Look be kidding at that, me. And he's going back on the bike. How tough is this young guy? I, is I, it legal? It's I've impressive, never had a shoulder. whatever it is. Yeah. If that's not the true definition of true sportsmanship, I don't know what is. But it is certainly not what Alex Espargaro's unsavory moment at Catalonia had him going through when his near-obvious win was snatched away from him as he pulled up early, waving to his fans thinking the race was over. To his disbelief, his early cheer soon became his worst nightmare when other racers decided to switch up positions as he ended up taking fifth place. Does he think the race is finished? I think he's just realized. Oh my goodness, can you believe it? What a howl by Alexis Bargaro. We thought it was a mechanical. He thought the race was over. He's made an incredible miscalculation. Alexis Bargaro thought his home Grand Prix was over. He thought he'd taken second place. I might not be sure how actually felt, but when you see a guy with his head tucked in between his hands and is still wearing all his racing gear, just know that man is hurting deep inside. Being unable to contain his emotions, Alex Espargaro takes a moment for himself and sheds a few sour tears. Luckily for Espargaro, he is not the only one who had their victories snatched from them by their own mistakes. Take a look at Brazilian rider André Verissimo in stand comedy mode, as he painfully handed his victory to Osvaldo Duenai near the finish line when he celebrated his almost perfect victory at the 2020 World Superbike Race in Brazil. But what is even worse is that his move didn't even earn him second place. Vem Veríssimo! Vem Veríssimo! Vem Veríssimo! Olha o Duende Veríssimo! Olha o Duende Veríssimo! Olha o Duende Veríssimo! Olha o Duende Veríssimo! Eu não acredito! Talk about a disastrous finish, but I'm sure this moment would make Esper Argaro a little bit comfortable or make him a little jealous. But if motorcycle racing has taught us something, it is that you should always expect the unexpected. Just ask rider Jurassi Rodriguez when he lost his 25-point position at the 2015 World Superbike race in Brazil while attempting to finish the race in style. But apparently, fellow rider Marcos Romaljo had other ideas. To be honest, that was what one would passionately like to call a wheel sky maneuver. But that's nothing. Don't get me started on the times motorcycles turned on ghost rider modes. And others going haywire. All these moments just to showcase the unprecedented turn of events that riders have had no choice but to bear with. But if you think the one in a trillion moments in motorcycle racing history were quite the show, then wait until you hear about the wildest finishes in motorcycle racing history. 